We have here a 2005 Mini Cooper S model, and the local car lot bought it at uh, the auction, and it's got an airbag warning light on, and he wanted me to check it out and see what it is. Yay. Now, I don't claim to be a Mini Cooper expert. I own one because I got a super sweet deal on it, basically traded some parts and a little bit of labor for the whole car. And I bought this little Foxwell scanner to go along with that car so I'm able to do some basic diagnosis. It's actually a pretty good little scanner for, for the cost. Um, but uh, let's see if we can get some airbag trouble codes out of this thing. There's our airbag light right there. So we click on BMW, scroll down one to Mini, and automatic selection will pull the VIN out of this thing. It's rather convenient actually. Okay. So uh, auto scan will scan all the modules, but uh, we, we just want to pick which control unit we want to scan, which is the airbag. Drive would be things like the engine and transmission, ch chassis, pretty sure the airbag's in the body. So you see there, five and six are both airbag related. I don't know how to tell you which one you had, but if you had done an auto scan, it would show you all the modules that are on the car so you could uh, then know which one for sure to do. I'm just going to experiment with five and see if it gets me some airbag trouble codes. Read codes. And it gives me 71 for seat occupancy detector passenger side. This scanner isn't perfect, but it does give you some data. And let's look at the data here. Weight category, front passenger, seat occupancy detector, passenger. Um, we'll select, see I don't claim to be an expert, I don't know what all these things do. Um, obviously that is that is the seat occupancy detector that the trouble code related to. And that one shows the status of the driver's belt. So let's just do those. You can select all the data too if you wanted. Look at all of them. So right now this is saying weight category child seat and seat occupancy detector passenger not assigned. Um, that's terminology is foreign to me. I'm, I assume that weight category they're able to detect if there's a child seat in there and they don't deploy the airbag if it's a child seat. I know in Volkswagen sometimes I'll just sit my laptop in the seat and it will sh it will start dinging the uh, seatbelt light because it thinks somebody's sitting there and it wants me to, wants that person to put on their seatbelt. Um, so maybe this Mini Cooper is pretty smart and can tell that the weight of the thing is about the weight of a child seat with a child in it. That seems fairly uh, strange to me. But not assigned, is that just saying that somebody's not sitting in it? That's. But saying not assigned, that's strange terminology to me. Uh, does that mean that it, nobody's sitting in the seat? I would, I would not, that's not the terminology I would use. Let me go and sit on the other side and I'll uh, see if it uh, changes state. Okay, with me sitting in the other side, nothing has changed. I'll jump around here a little bit. It just hasn't changed a bit. Guess we can compare this to a known good car because I have another Mini Cooper in here right now. Let me look underneath the seat see if I can see anything unplugged or anything like that. So here's our wires. Looks like they're all plugged in. 
not going to be easy to do any testing with it unless we unbolt the seat, which would be fairly easy to unbolt. There's the bolts right there. And we could unbolt the seat, tilt that seat up, and make some checks there. Okay, we're going to put the scanner on this yellow one and see if what the data parameters for that passenger side occupancy sensor show so that we have a known good. Choose those same two parameters, weight category, front passenger, seat occupancy, front passenger, and view data. And this one in the weight category for front passenger says not assigned, whereas our car with the problem said child seat or something along those lines. And this says not assigned here, so let's sit in it and see what it shows then. And as I sit in it, it showed that one shows starts showing assigned almost right away, and then that one showed assigned a second later. So that pretty much shows me how it should work. Our other one's definitely not working that way. So we'll print a wiring schematic and see what that shows. So as I'm looking through Mitchell here, I see a multiple restraint system five. Uh, this is different than multiple restraint system four. Real multiple restraint system four didn't show a passenger occupancy sensor, passenger seat occupancy detector, or it calls it a OC3. Okay, so as I scroll down here to seat occupancy detector, OC3 mat, and it says the purpose of the OC3 mat is to monitor the presence of a person or object placed in the front passenger seat and determine if the, whether the airbag should be deactivated. The OC3 mat is capable of detecting a child seat that conforms to the relevant standard by virtue of the pattern of the impression it makes on the seat and deactivates the passenger airbags. That's interesting. So there's what it looks like. The analyzer of the OC3 mat sends a message to the MRS5 control unit via the K bus. If the system detects that the seat is unoccupied or that a child seat for a child up to one year is fitted, the airbags on the passenger side are deactivated. The MR5 control unit switches on the airbag warning light. The airbag warning light indicates that the airbag on the passenger side is deactivated. That sounds pretty clear cut. So while snooping around in ProDemand, I found this question here. Um, ProDemand has a feature where technicians can ask questions and other technicians answer it. And so this has a question regarding a uh, 06 Cooper. And his question was, had SRS code 71 for seat occupancy sensor, and replaced the sensor, and now has a different trouble code. And he goes on with some other stuff, but uh, the tech who answered it said the OC3 map must be programmed. Now, obviously, if I go replacing this thing, I, I don't have the ability to program it. I'm sure the Foxwell tool can't do that. It might be something as simple as an adaptation, but I'm not sure I can do that here, so I'm not sure I can fix this car. But let's look at a wiring schematic and see what it says. So here's our seat occupancy recognition device. I don't know what to call it. Is it a sensor? Is it a module? And you can see there it gets its power from this fuse right here, which also powers other things. 
and this right here is a ground coming over here to this location right there sharing ground with seatbelt stuff and then this one right here this wire goes down to what says computer data line system and it, follow it over here it goes to the instrument cluster and follow it back here to pin number one it goes back to another the other schematic at pin one I'm trying to find it here at pin one and you follow that down and it ends up right here on the K bus signal so obviously this isn't the seat recognition sensor that's a seat recognition module so with with regards to our question it probably does need to be programmed but a used seat might come and already be programmed so maybe we could put a used seat in this I think I think the best thing to do here since I have a my daughter drives a car the exact same year I think I will swap out the seat in my daughter's car it comes out real super easy um, I'm gonna have to pull the seat up anyway to do any testing at this location because all this is underneath the seat I'm gonna have to remove the seat anyway it's just four bolts I can get to with an air tool I can zip it out of there super fast and We'll swap out that seat and see if a used seat is even an option because if the used seat doesn't clear the problem or triggers another trouble code or it has to be programmed then um, that wouldn't be a good option I can't recommend that to the customer if I can't fix the car that way so we'll swap out a seat see if that corrects the problem see if it triggers other trouble codes see if it needs to be programmed things like that and uh, we'll go from there maybe we'll do some scope testing and check power and grounds on this sensor Okay, we are going to look at some live data. We're going to look at weight category for front passenger and seat occupancy detector for front passenger. And then view data. Mariah, can you go ahead and sit in the car? And as he sits in the front seat, that one changed to a sign and that, and that one changed to a sign and can you step out and step back in give it just a minute to react and it says not assigned when he's out of the car and not assigned there so go ahead and sit back down again and that one says assigned and that one says assigned so the substituting the seat in did fix the problem so it looks like it does need a sensor uh, just on a side note, the airbag light is flashing while we're scanning it, but I'm pretty sure that's just because we're scanning it. Let's go ahead and escape out of this. So after we escaped out, it did stop flashing the ABS light. So I'm going to recommend to these people to uh, replace this sensor. The sensor is $1,100 if you buy it from Mini. It comes with part of the seat and part of the leather, part of the upholstery. So they're going to start looking for a used seat is my understanding because we've kind of talked about this already. Well folks, I have to say I'm reviewing my tracks here to show you what I found, but you got to re utilize all your resources. After I swapped out the seat, I went to uh, technical bulletins and then I saw recalls right here. And then right off the bat, there's an airbag frontal recall. And if you scroll down, it applies to our car. Description of defect. Recall in certain model year Coopers. Due to manufacturing, installation, and exposure issues, the front passenger seat occupation detective mat may not function properly, and as a result, the front passenger air mag might not deploy in a crash. That's exactly what we have going on. The uh, light is simply warning us that it's off and Mini is supposed to notify the owners and the dealer is supposed to replace the, the front passenger seat occupant detection mat free of charge. Owners may co contact customer service and I think we have just saved this customer a bunch of money. And we're going to uh, call this number for our customer and see what they say.
and maybe the customer can just run it over there and get it fixed for free. Okay, I thought it might be interesting to videotape the phone conversation with the uh, on the customer service line for Mini Cooper. So I have their number dialed in the phone now, and I will call them, put them on speaker. Had the VIN ready for if they ask for it. Recall information on your vehicle can be found at bmwusa.com slash recall. Please stay on the line and a representative will be with you shortly. To expedite your call, please have the last seven of your VIN or preferred phone number ready. Your call may be monitored or recorded for quality service. Your estimated wait time is under three minutes. In relation to this just come may I have your name, please? My name is Richard Middleton. I've never called you before, so I don't think you would have my phone number or any information there. Okay. And are you calling in regards to a vehicle that you own or one of a prospective vehicle? How may I assist you today? Um, I, I actually work at a mechanic shop, and I found a recall on a, one of my customers' vehicles, and I want to make sure that the, that, that the recall is still active, and maybe they can bring it out to you guys and have you fix it. I can certainly look at the recall information. Um, if it's anything other than a recall, I would not be able to release that and except to the registered owner, but I can discuss recalls. Do you have the last seven of the VIN available, Richard? Yes, I do. It's TL12426. And was that Tango Lima 12426? Yes. Okay, thank you. And I have the vehicle as an 05 Cooper S hardtop in chili red? Yes. Okay. So all recalls, just so you're aware, are going to be VIN specific based on manufacturing date and location down to batches of parts used in assembly. There are no open recalls associated to this VIN number. Okay. Thank you very much. Certainly. Is there anything I could further assist with? No. Okay. Well, thank you for calling and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. So despite the fact that uh, there is a recall on this vehicle, maybe the recall has already been done and this is just a defective sensor. I was hoping the customer could get that thing fixed for free, but looks like he's going to have to look for a used seat after all.